showtime. BS and View Media, in association with S T W F T V, the podcasting network. Introducing the best in the world. Oh yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome into the show, Best in the World, hashtag B-I-T-W. I'm your host, Dale, and with me today, I got my guy, Jay. What's up with you, man? Man, what's up with you, Dale? How everybody doing today? Now, all good, man. A good week of wrestling. I'm telling you, like, uh, Triple H ain't missing. <laughs> <laughs> Like I posted in the uh in the little group earlier, man. Ever since uh Triple H took over, man, it's like a, a whole cookout for the whole WWE fan, wrestling fans everywhere. It's just man, it's a hell of a time to be a wrestling fan. Right. I know I say that every week, but it's true. <laughs> Real talk, man. We living in some good good times right now. Good time mm-hmm. as a wrestling fan. So uh Definitely been enjoying this thing. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, two checking in. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> so, with the two. Yes, indeed. That's right. Like, share, subscribe. Yes, and Beer Media and STWF TV. Uh, yesterday, man, we, we did a, a nice little special on the NBA draft. We had a ton of people participating in the chat. And uh, watching live, man, it was it was it was a it was a ball, bro. Uh-huh. As as expected, man, the, the NBA is constantly changing. It's just like the wrestling world, man. It's constantly changing, you know. And the young guys, you know, that are coming up, they they're looking to be better, be be the next big thing, the next Michael Jordan, or the next LeBron. You know, me myself, yeah. I was kind of interested to see if Bronny was going to get drafted day one. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Mm-hmm. That was that was more drama. Um, I think everybody's kind of uh, taking taking their um, maybe a WWE's lead on like building stories up because no one's better at, at building mm-hmm. up a story for you know an event or um, a matchup or something. So you know, mm-hmm. I, I think everybody's kind of taking their lead with that thing. So. Yeah, I, I can honestly say that, um, you know, WWE is the main reason for a lot of places stepping up their game because, I mean, it is the art of storytelling inside of a wrestling ring, you know, so. Definitely see Roger Goodell yeah. um, embracing being a heel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Him, him, Jerry Jones. Yeah, they got a couple of them that embrace being heels now. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, it's all for wrestling. So there you go. <laughs> so yeah, man, let's get started here. Uh, something just brought to my attention mm-hmm. is Amy Kellner as uh, he died. This is the former Turner broadcasting executive who canceled WCW back in 2000. This guy was 77 years old. Gosh. It's a blessing. <laughs> you know, first of all, I want to say the this is the guy who really killed WCW. They, 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 I know that's a big thing going on right now, but he killed WCW because they needed their head chopped off. The snake just needed it chopped off at that point in time. Wasn't no coming back from the attitude era. And like Ted Turner said, Vince was showing too much of the tit. <laughs> so, you know, it, it had to be done. Yeah. But yep, you know, he's yeah. also you know, he's also responsible for like the WB taking off and the CW taking off with their many shows, man. Like he was influential to my childhood. Used to run home every day after school, watch WB cartoons and Saturday morning cartoons. Well sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. I tried to um, introduce my kid to 
Animaniacs. They did a reboot. He kind of oh he added a little bit the reboot, but hmm. he would not in my version at all. Like <laughs> oh no, that that was the OG version. That that the OG version is the most beloved version. I, every time they bring something back, they water it down, man. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Bronny is the heel right now. Well, well LeBron always been the heel, right? So <laughs> he's always been a heel in my book. That's my most hated player of all yeah. time now. Because he left uh Cleveland with the decision. He's been the heel, so <laughs> and not even that, how he just messed up Miami completely. So, you know, they haven't shook back yet. <laughs> yep. Can't count the bubble, but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, let's look at some AEW stuff. And um, out of Ring of Honor, we got news finally about Athena's injury. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. an ankle injury, and it looks like she's going to be out at least six months. Um, Mm. So we're going to see what they're going to do with the championship. They kind of did a little, little, little work in the a little announcement there, so I don't know what Tony Khan is going to do with that. I mean, if he's smart, I would definitely take a page out of WWE book. The next show, do like a a, a woman's battle royal or, you know, uh, what's the name? I know Forbidden Door, you know, that just is coming up or it passed. Yeah, it's coming up uh, Sunday. Okay, it's that. coming up Sunday. Um, yeah. Try to do something, you know, if, if you can make a last minute alter, you know, alteration to it, or the show is leading up to the next pay per view. Do it like how the WWE did the King of the Ring tournament, and okay. then the winner just get the title at the next pay per view. I mean, yeah. it's smart, it's simple, push your ratings. Yeah, um, you know, Ring of Honor, they, they will do some tournaments for sure, I and mean, they got nothing but. Uh, ladies to use for it, so mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, kind of bringing back a story that we talked about last week. Well, at least maybe last week or the week before, one or the two. Um, mm-hmm. Buddy Matthews, the injury that he had. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you, you were, you were on it. I will see you were on it. Mm-hmm. Said, this, this was work. And I was like, well, you know, if it was to work, why did he, you know, do this or do that? Like, they could have just had him get jumped in the back and it would have taken care of everything. But they did what they did. And we saw Buddy Matthews and Rhea Ripley get married over the weekend. So it looks like this was a planned um, time off for him. So good way to hold him off of TV so he can go and get married and congratulations to him yeah congratulations to real ripley and buddy matthews man but i hate to say it in aew anytime you take off mm-hmm. anytime you take off that's get added back you know it gets recycled to the back of your contract i know he was trying to go back to wwe i know he's trying to get back to his wife but he <laughs> just kind of messed it up he just came off an injury right um, you know, I don't think so. No, I, I don't think he's been injured in a while. So it might have been a couple months ago. Uh, uh, they just stopped showing him on TV. Something happened. I think they stopped showing the House of Black on TV, and it was just like, "Where's Buddy Matthews?" Okay. Mm-hmm. But you know, like I say, it's a work. I don't. I don't understand why they took it to that degree. I guess AEW is just trying to be different. Oh, we're not your typical WWE. We're not going to jump them in the back. I mean, each his own. He could have finished the match, and then they could have jumped him in the back, and it would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, it, it could have. But, you know, AEW like doing stuff the hard way, or a different way. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, well, this weekend we have Forbidden Door. So let's talk about this card of Forbidden Door here. Um, so let's start off with, well, 
I'll be honest, a lot of the Japanese superstars, like I just know them because, you know, my, my wrestling fandom has limits, I guess. <laughs> You're not the only one. You're definitely not the only one. I apologize for murdering these names, but it is what it is. All right, we got Tanahashi and the Acclaim versus the Elite in a Trios match. Um, mm. I, I will say I, I am really enjoying the the stuff from the Elite. Um, mm-hmm. The the look, I mean, the, the new guy. Um, I, dang it, I should know this guy's name, but I don't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> He's been funny too, you know, like with his uh, his little stuff backstage, doing the stuff with the Elite. Um, of course, the claim is always uh, entertaining. Um, so, what are your, what's your thoughts on this match? Uh, I'm gonna be real with you. I, I like, you know, everybody knows my stance on EW, but I like the claim. The yeah. claim probably, you know, the best tag team they have right now, to, in my opinion. You know, the most all around. They got it on the mic. They got it in the ring. And if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, they got one of the head honchos of the uh, Attitude Era, Mr. Badass Billy Gunn, so, as their mentor. And that's just win for me all the way around. Um, the elite, the elite going to always be the elite. I love, you know, we love them, we hate them. But, again, they VPs, they don't need to win. It'll hurt, it'll hurt them more than help them. Yeah. Um, I, 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 like I said, I, I'm liking the work that they're doing, though, just being the heels that they are. Um, they got shoes to sell, though, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and honestly, I like, I like them as heels because, you know, for every variation of the uh, young guns I remember, mm-hmm. they, were, they weren't really heels. You know, I ain't, I'm not really counting New Japan, but I'm talking about like in TNA, even when it was in WWE for the for the little tryout stuff. You know, they were they were like faces. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm with two here. I think uh, I think the EVPs and the Elite uh, they win. Uh, I think the clan gonna get screwed some kind of way because I mean the Elite they're they abusing their power, and so mm-hmm. I can see what's happening. That's that's what I'm going with too. Um, let's see. Let's look at the next matchup here. We got Dante Martin versus Mark Briscoe versus uh, Takeshita versus Jack Perry and Leo Rush in a ladder match for the TNT Championship. <laughs> this one, you definitely got some high flyers in here. Um, yes, fast guys. Um, you know, Mark Bristol, he don't care about his body. Um, Tanahashi, I'm sorry, uh, Takeshia has been, mm-hmm. it's been really good with his ring work. Um, I like the dynamic between him and Don Callis, um, yes. in the family and everything like that. Leo Rush, of course, he's a, he's a great athlete, but I've seen him come and go a million times. I'm just wondering when he's going to go again. Um, but the way I see this match going, I think uh, Jack Perry's going to end up winning because mm. he's part of the elite and some kind of way they're going to work into his favor and he's going to win. What do you think? Oh, so you just you you just going with the uh, the the DX in your house type of scenario uh, where every member of the uh, young bus get well, I mean, every member of the elite, I'm sorry, get the yes. dub. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm going to be real with you. I think Jack Perry is going to get the win, you know, because it, it's, it's just a smart move. Create more heat, you know, for your EVPs. Um, but it's going to be very entertaining, man. Like you say, Tamahashi. Wait, is it Tamahashi or Takashi? It wasn't um, like gesture. I love his work like honestly that's what brought my eyes to AEW a little bit more like i've been catching the clips and then i i started watching the shows and you know he's doing some don Callis is a fool man like did anybody he stick to they they just 
He just magnet. make it, man. Yeah, he magnet. <laughs> he he's like he's like the Paul Heyman of AEW. Yes. You know. Absolutely. But um I would agree. <laughs> Leo Rush, if it wasn't for the fact that he comes and goes so much, I would definitely say he would win this because he he's doing phenomenal work on the indies right now. And mm -hmm. um like I just love Leo Rush. Like I didn't understand. I understand that WWE did, didn't know how to use him or didn't have any room for his talent, but man, Leo Rush is a character, man. Like, even when he goes to the face paint, putting the face paint on, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, look, his, his ring work is, is good, and, and I even like him as a character. Um, mm -hmm. I just think he's he's young, and he, mm -hmm. he's messing up. You know, like, because like, young people do. Like, it just happens. Well, it was at first, the reason why uh, WWE got rid of him because they say, you know, like like you said, he was young and messing up. He he was hard to work with. He kept getting into it with people in the, um, right. in the locker room. Yes. Yes. And when you but go I, everywhere and you get into it with people, there's one mm -hmm. common denominator and it's you. Yeah. And, and honestly... I, you know, I haven't really heard too many more stories about him, you know, having bad locker room etiquette, but, um, you know, I do follow him on Instagram and like I say, dude is, dude is phenomenal. Like I just love, I love high flyers. I love big agile dudes, big meaty agile dudes. And I like short, just acrobat, uh, daredevils. You know, and Leo Rush fits that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, Shawn Char Michaels was, was like this when he was young, too. But he eventually had to grow up. And once Oh, uh, yeah. Up, you know? Yeah. Rush is his. But, but what I say about Shawn, the difference between Leo Rush and Shawn Michaels is Shawn Michaels was the golden boy. <laughs> like, he yeah. just, I don't know, you know. It was just he he has that stardom, you know what I'm saying? So he had a right. I'm not gonna say he had a right to be cocky, but he had a right to be cocky, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, let's move to the next matchup. We've got <laughs> Daniel, I'm sorry, Brian Danielson versus uh Shingo. I don't know much about this guy, but this is the Owen Hart. Uh, foundation tournament, uh, it's a quarterfinal match. So, um, I, I believe they have some kind of history. We saw them do a face to face on uh, on Rampage or uh, Dynamite or something like that. Uh, I just see uh, Daniels moving on in the tournament because you know the, the guy's gonna be gone next week. That's that's what I see. What you think? <laughs> Um, <laughs> like honestly, that's the truth. You know, as I hate to say, that's what um, it's a downfall for things like this. Mm -hmm. You know, you just know that you know they're working for another promotion, so you know they're not gonna most likely be back next week. Um, but I see Brian Danielson taking it, and you know they do have some type of history. You know, back when he was uh, what, what was it, the American Dragon over there in Japan. You mm -hmm. know, so. It should be it should be very entertaining. I can't wait to check it out. Yeah, I mean, you know, Danielson's gonna put on a good match. Uh he's definitely gonna uh take some bumps and punishment for us because that's what he does. <laughs> and he and to be honest with you, I seen some of the clips of his opponent. He's gonna take some 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 bumps. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> these, these guys in Japan I, look I, I was thinking about being a wrestler when I was a little bit younger mm -hmm. I would never go to New Japan never <laughs> well, they talk about that strong style so. <laughs> hey I ain't got it I ain't strong enough I ain't got heart <laughs> alright we got Zack Sabre Jr. versus Orange Cassidy um, this is just a regular one-on-one -on -one match here. So, um, Zack Sabre Jr., 
you know, with the catch wrestling stuff. I mean, it's it's a unique style. Of course, Orange Cassidy is a unique style. Um, it's just a, a clash of styles here, and mm-hmm. we're gonna see how it plays out. It, really, the the outcome doesn't matter. So um, I'm gonna pick Zack Saber Jr. just to kind of balance things out. What do you think, Jay? <laughs> Uh, I'm actually going with Orange Cassidy. Like I've been high on Orange Cassidy, you mm-hmm. know, since he was on, you know, on the Indies. You know what I'm saying? Well, I guess he still is on the Indies because AEW is considered indie. But um, you know, I've been high on dude for a very long time, and like I just like just that cool style. I ain't never <laughs> seen nobody just wrestle right. with their hands in their pockets. <laughs> hands in <their> pockets, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like that's. I mean that that's bringing the new new uh, level to the game, man. Talk about all some R truth type of stuff. I agree. I agree. He is really, really athletic to be able to do that, man, and on a consistent basis too. <laughs> right. And you know, like I said, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be very entertaining. I've seen some of uh Saber Sabers Juniors, you know, matches. Not many. So it's. The styles are, are going to complement each other. Yeah, That's one thing I do say about AEW. They do not put some talent together in the ring. They might not make make it work all the way, but they know how to make it be entertaining. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, man. So, um, let's see. The next matchup, we've got Mercedes Monet versus Stephanie Bokwar. Um, looked like this is somebody from CMLL. Um, she was down there this week, or Shady's Monet was. Uh, mm-hmm. and they went face to face. I guess they got a little physical, and Mercedes got the the best of that matchup, I believe. And mm. so they're gonna have this actual match. So, and they're putting both of the titles on the line: the CMLL mm. title and this TBS. Uh, women's championship, so we'll see really? how that works out. Yeah, well, um, I'm 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 going to go ahead and pick Mercedes for this one. I think they're going to end up using her in the same met- same way they use um, Kenny Omega as like a belt collector, and I think she's going to be the perfect person that AEW can send to different promotions, and they'll want to have Mercedes walk around with their title. What do you think? Uh, uh, I completely agree with you. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't really think about it uh, on the f- terms of like the Kenny Omega belt collector uh, thing, but that's smart. You know, mm-hmm. you used, you got her, you you boasted her up for months. You know what I'm saying? Before she even had a match. I'm yeah. so glad she has finally shut up to some degree. It started wrestling. So I wrestled. Now, yes. it's, it's a, um, <laughs> um, it, it is good that she's going to go down there and get one, one another title. And, it, you know, she's just that face. Ever since she was Sasha Banks, they knew that they can uh, use her in any type of way. You can put her in any situation. Then also, I believe this was worked into her um, contract as well. Because I know when she set out, to really depart WWE, she was like, she want to go on all the in- indie shows, just take over, wrestle any and everybody that she yeah. never got a chance to. Right, and she got injured. So, like, first, yeah. First leg of the trip. <laughs> right. You know, Karma finally told, you know, caught up to her, like, you shouldn't have yeah. left like that. But, you know, I'm glad she's healthy. I'm glad that she's finally getting to do what she wanted to do. And that's travel the world in other different promotions and wrestle all these new upcoming women and even some women that have been around. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, next match up, Tony storm versus Mina Sarah core. Um, listen, I don't want this to end. Honestly, I want them all to love each other and just be on camera together and make me happy. That's what I want. <laughs> Hey, I, I love it too, though. I, I'm, I'm, you know, this Tony, timeless Tony Storm thing. Yes. She has wow. 
she has took that and made it to her own. Been going forever. I love it. <laughs> yes, like, and that's something like WWE. I feel like they should have did that with kind of like Lacey Evans, but that's uh -huh. another that's another story here and there. But um, you know, I see timeless Tony Storm just taking over in in the ring and winning could you know winning a match or whatever. She has like she just she has it, and to me, you know, where are you, Big Breaker? Where are you? Like, where are all these other women that were? Well, I know Thunder Rosa came back, right? Yeah, she, yeah, she, right? yeah. She, she came back, so it's like, where are all these other women? You know what I'm saying? That was here since day one. Put you know, Tony Storm needs some challenges, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so that's why I'm saying, man. Look, I, I'm, but I'm loving the, um, the the chemistry between her, Mariah May, and and, and Sarah Cole. Like, I'm I'm loving this. Like, they need to sign her from uh, wherever she is. She comes to <laughs> eight, permanently. <laughs> well, I do believe they worked together before, didn't they? Weren't they in New Japan together? They did. Because that's why they did. Well, this week when they came out. Um, so, so Mariah May came out with both of them, right? Uh, she mm -hmm. came out with Storm first, and then she ran back up the ramp and came out with Sharakova and did like this little dance number they did when they were tag team uh, partners. So it was mm -hmm. really interesting. I, I just loved it all. That's all I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I can't wait for it. It is. It, it, it's definitely a different age in wrestling when in, you know you could just. The women stories are uh, more fitting. Yes. Let me just say that it's Very it's not great. over sexualized. It's not yeah. um, it, it's not showing revealing too much, it's but enough. it's giving right. It's just enough to to grab those us men and even yes. you know even yes. some women. You know, it, it's the right move. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I could have said it better, right? <laughs> <laughs> match up for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. We got John Moxley versus Tiswa. I don't know this guy at all. But apparently, <laughs> Moxley beat him for this title. So mm -hmm. now they got beef and they're gonna settle it here, bitten door. Um, my pick is gonna be that guy because of John <laughs> in there. He's gonna be Moxley here. That's how it works. <laughs> what you think? Yeah, look, I don't know too much, to, but uh, again, I know John Moxley fits that new fan style, and mm -hmm. it's gonna be a war. Is uh, yeah. I'm trying to think about who that was. That it's gonna be John Moxley is the Ric Flair. Uh, of this 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 day and age, man. When it comes to the he's a bleeder, so it's mm. gonna be a night. It's gonna be a hell of a match. But what Jr. say is gonna be a slobber knocker. He gonna <laughs> he will bleed for sure. You you can count on it. It's, it's a pay per view match. Mm -hmm. Mox bleed. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's it's not. I'm gonna be real. You know, it it be it sells perfectly. It's not like uh you know how back in the day it's like God damn Rick Flair just all his blood just came out of his body. It's, it's not on those lines, but it's it's on like they have a reason for him to bleed. Like he really puts his body on the line. So yeah, you know I would love to see John Moxley continue to be IWGP champion, but you know he won it over there, so it's only right that he won it back over here. Mm -hmm. See things the same way here. All right, next matchup uh, should be the main event with Swerve Strickland versus Will Ospreay for the AEW World Championship. Um, I am very, very afraid of this matchup because, once again, on Dynamite, they had Ospreay in the ring with MJF. Uh, he's showing hmm. up MJF. There's another story going on. And when you have somebody close to MJF, 
that he doesn't have the title is is it's gravity. And I'm yep. thinking they're gonna take this title off a of swerve and they're gonna have this big match at um all in be Osprey versus MJF. That's what I think is going to end up happening. So I think I think Osprey wins this one. What's your thoughts? Okay, I, I don't normally do this with AEW, but I'm gonna go ahead and go in my bag. Um honestly, I'm gonna start off by talking about the match. Okay. Well, Osprey, it you know, I know I you know the rumors like you just said, but I do see if I do see him losing this, but I don't see him losing clean. I see a MGF. I mean, it, uh, listen to me. MJF coming to the ring and causing a distraction, okay. and then therefore it it's gonna be brought up at all in as a triple threat match. Mm. And the reason why I'm saying that is because one that that's a money maker. Come on now, MJF, Willow, Willow Spray, and Swerve Strickland. Mm-hmm. Like that'll be a hell of a match, and that's a, a hell of a way for Swerve to solidify his championship reign by beating two of the top stars in AEW. Yeah, and you know, far as them taking a title off Swerve, it's it would be too early. Like like we talked about with Damian Priest, like we talked about with Cody Rhodes, it's mm-hmm. too early for them to do that. If they do it, well, AEW do do some stupid shit, but. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna take it off swerve. Like, <laughs> All in. I, I I don't think I don't think they will because you know Swerve is a hell of a champion right now, and he's putting a lot of eyes from the music scene to other celebrities, like just putting it on AEW, and that's what they need. Yeah, you you you're right. You're right, but. Osprey is the, the every time that music hits, you know, he's getting that that big roar. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, they, they're itching to give him the title, and all in, I, I believe that's going to be his ceremony. <laughs> and we learned from WWE <laughs> home field does matter because they yeah. give the home crowd something. And if they're gonna get the home crowd something in all in, what else is it going to be? Okay, well that brings a different fact in. I didn't know it was that. I, I didn't know it was on, at home. So now it's at home. It I like can't it? go again. Yes, I can't go again. I cannot go against that. <laughs> I can't go against that at all. So I still say the triple threat plan, but Will Osprey taking it home. I can I can I can see the triple threat and that, that would make me feel better about it from score for swerve because at least he holds the title until all in. That's what I'm looking yes. for. Like he and then he can all in. Yes. And then he could lose it at all in by MJF being pinned. And then you know it could, could continue this rivalry with him and Will Osprey, and they could maybe take the title off him or maybe not. It could just be a back and forth thing. But I do like Swerve as a champion out of all those reasons I had just named. So, well, we just got to see. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We, we, we will see. Um, but, you know, I, I think I think AEW put together a nice card. It's, it's very stacked. Um, it's probably going to be about four hours, so buckle mm-hmm. in, nap on Sunday, because you're going to be up late trying to watch it. So, uh <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get that nap, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to get my adult nap. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> with with, um, with uh, WrestleMania, man, you know, get my nap in because if I don't, I'm going to fall asleep. The interest, the interest are so long. Uh, the matches are an hour and a half long. Like, it's, you know, so learned on these cards, not so more with WWE at the moment because they did the interviews been kind of short and sweet. But yeah, yeah. give you five matches and you out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think I think it was kind of they learned from from uh you know situations, but at the same time, you know, you could bring that you're getting 
the same buck for less matches. Yeah, but it, it, it's smart because they're, they're, they're doing the two-day ticket thing, right? So they give you a mm-hmm. SmackDown in the same town, and then they give you the, uh, the PLE. Uh, so that's, that way you're getting at least, you know, 10 matches all together in the town. But you right. got all yeah. different let's, let's not forget they do the house shows, too. Absolutely. They do, they do a couple house shows in the surrounding areas. So, you know, that that's that's smart on their part. Oh yeah, they collect that money. <laughs> I wish I could see some of it shoot. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, man, shoot, I forgot about this drop I just made. So whenever mm-hmm. whenever we got something that's a that's a work, mm-hmm. I need to see this drop. Work, 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 work. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So the Buddy Murphy thing. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> <laughs> Rihanna, tell him. Tell him it's definitely a work. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, right. Speaking on that, Dom had Dom, you know, they asked Dom about, about the wedding photos. Oh, you talking about, uh, <laughs> oh, <we're> real. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they put Dom on the spot. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> that's so good yeah but I, I can't wait till we comes back it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be lit so but before we get into WWE let's um mm-hmm. take a quick break and uh we'll come back and we're gonna talk about all the happenings in WWE so check this out this is an emergency message stop what you're doing and hit the like button. Also comment and subscribe. Thank you. We now return you to your program. AirPods. Convenient and small. AirPods. Versatile with high fidelity. AirPods. Listen to music or talk on the phone. AirPods. Now with concealable subwoofer. Now drop that face. We are back. That's in the world. Hashtag B-I-T-W. We're about to get into some WWE talk. So let's do that, man. What would you think about uh, SmackDown, uh, Raw, NXT? Hell, what, what's been your favorite show this week? How about that? I should ask that from the this, starters. This week? Oh, man. Well, this week, uh, the past week. So starting start from SmackDown since since okay. you know, I was on Thursday. Okay. So starting from SmackDown, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It's gonna have to be SmackDown. Okay. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm an OG SmackDown dude, you know. I'm talking about original fits. Like I'm very proud of the product that it is today, mm-hmm. especially seeing from where it came. And man, I've been talking about it for months. Months, months, and he finally debuted. And if you ask me, he couldn't debut no better way yeah. than on SmackDown. You yeah. know, and, and, and the person I'm talking about is, is, is Jacob Fontu. Yep. Um, and Ooh. man, he looks good. Mm-hmm. He lost a lot of weight. He got in a shape. Like, he really took that time to prepare for his uh, debut. Yes. Yes, he did. <sighs> Man, I'm scared of the bloodline. I'm scared. <laughs> because you got you got the, the dangerous Tongas, Tonga brothers. You got mm-hmm. the dangerous Jacob Font too. The, they call him the wow man. Mm-hmm. Um, you it's have Solo Sokoa. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm sorry to say. The only thing that that Roman Reigns and the Usos got on them is the prestige in the WWE, you know, because yep. these guys, man, they got Oxus. they could be probably the stable of all time. Yeah. Yep. So if WWE could work it right, 
yeah, I, how, how would you how would you book this this uh, this new bloodline coming up here? That that was it. Um, hell, <laughs> that's 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 um okay. This might be a little bit long because you got to put the pieces together. How mm-hmm. we book this, right? You have money in the bank coming up. Okay, so usually they do a, some quiet shakeups along the way, and uh, J uh, one J also is in the money in the bank. Yeah. I can see him. I can see him winning money in the bank, right? And actually, it's two scenarios. I can see him winning money in the bank, going cash in on um, Cody Rhodes, and actually winning his first major title, well, first single title in WWE. And um, well, really, three ways because. I'm thinking about the Austin Theory effect that happened when he won Money in the Bank, which was weird because they did that for the first time for some reason. If you don't cash in on Cody, he could cash in on, uh, what is that, the U.S. champion over there? Yeah. Who might be Logan Paul or might be L.A. Knight. We're going to talk about that. And that that's a way to just bring him back to SmackDown, right? Or he can get cost his opportunity at Money in the Bank by Solo because Solo is just taking out every Samoan member in the WWE just to dominate, to show them dominance for turn, you know, for turning their back on their lineage. That's kind of how I would book it, like make him like a hit squad to where you have, you're forced to bring Roman Reigns back. You're forced to put the Usos back together because whether we like it or not, you know, I'm not going to say the tag team division is um, any lesser because the Usos is not together, but you put the Usos together, you got the Usos. You can put them against uh, the Tong- the Tongas. You can put them against... Um, DIY, you can put them against all these other, you know, teams. And then with what well, usually when one team break up, another team forms. You know, and yeah. I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Um so I w- I would say my my favorite show of the week has been Raw. Um probably like two weeks in a row. Um last okay. week we had Y six deal. And mm-hmm. this week now we've got um the the crap going on with uh, with Liv Morgan and the judgment. <laughs> and I think this has been Liv Morgan has just been phenomenal. Uh, yes. since she's got the title. Uh, just absolutely phenomenal. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm right there with you. Like, you know, that would have been my second show, like Raw, you know. Um I am so interested. I'm on the edge of my seats because of the fact that Liv Morgan, um, Finn Balor, and um, what's his name? I can't think. Of, I can't never think of his name. JD McDonough. JD. Mm-hmm. They was posing at the end on the ramp at the end of Raw. Yeah, like uh, Finn Balor just you know shrugs his shoulders. <laughs> You know, El Chapion is not gonna like that. Well, you know. so so this is this is where I kind of see this going. Mm-hmm. I think what we're gonna end up seeing is Liv moving into the Judgment Day, Rhea moving out of the Judgment Day, and Damian Priest moving out of the Judgment Day. Mm. That's what I see happening. <laughs> because right I mean, now, it was. Mm-hmm. Live, live right. with it and, and just helped everybody. She's yeah. basically handing out money. <laughs> yeah, she she she's basically taking mommy's spot. I can agree with you on that. But what, what I will say is I've seen reports that Rhea Ripley might not be in when she comes back, she might not be in contention for the title. It might just put her with whatever is going on at that time. She definitely coming so, 
There's, there's no way she's I mean, not coming back to live. Yeah, they got to do that. I mean, they got to do that, but you know, WWE be having to do a lot of things, and they 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 tend to drop the ball, you know. But Triple H, Triple H, we have he hasn't really dropped the ball as much, so we we hopefully that's gonna be that. But that's the storyline that they they going with. This this the main storyline right now. So it like I said, depending on if she's out, which is gonna be you know past SummerSlam, they say most likely she will be. She might not be in the title picture. So what I'm thinking is they're gonna take the title off of Lil Morgan at some point. Okay. Um, but for as that be a without the title, then yeah, just just come back with a vengeance and then work her way up the ladder again. Um, the, the whole the whole story has been I want to take everything from Lil. No, I'm, I'm but look, let me let me let me let me speak upon that now. Now. Yeah. A few weeks ago, we seen Finn Balor take that room key. Yeah. So, what if she's really not, she's she pulling the work on down, but she's really after Finn and JD and the rest of Judgment Day, which she knows she's not going to get L champion. So, basically, she's going to take Finn, JD, and maybe possibly add someone else into the mix. Therefore, you will have that breakup that they've been teasing for at least a year, a year now between Finn Balor and um, Damian Priest. And then you'll have you'll have Mommy, Dom, um, Priest. I don't know what the, I don't know what the hell going on with Carlito. That's just I'm still trying to understand that. <laughs> Carlito has been entertaining, bro. <laughs> he, he has, but it's like he it seemed like they took our true out and put Carlito in. Well, yeah, 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 for sure. I agree with that. You know, I would have just prefer our true, but you know <laughs> I mean just being honest, um so I just see them going to war. Judgment Day versus um Riot Squad. <laughs> Look at this crap, man. Carlito. <laughs> <laughs> now that's cool. <laughs> Look at what you said. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> like he and he be. I'm not gonna lie. He do not miss that mark. Like yeah. <laughs> he do not miss it. And that's one thing I liked about Carlito. Carlito back then, you know, he yeah. never missed that mark. All right, Eric. Um, what 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 show has been your favorite this week? Um, we're starting from SmackDown. Mm. Tough, tough, tough. Mm -hmm. SmackDown was good. Mm -hmm. That uh, Bray Wyatt or Wyatt Six, yeah, interview was, yeah. Like if you ever lost somebody that you cared about, yep, yeah. that yeah. Oof. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I cried. Like I like it really it teared me up. Like that was that was a, a fire promo. Yeah, that was that's gonna yeah. be hard to beat. But um you know, and, and SmackDown and Raw have both been good, but I'll tell you, NXT's been good lately. <laughs> They're kind of hitting on all that's... cylinders. Yeah. Um I'm really loving the TNA crossover stuff. Um yes. I hope it continues. Absolutely. I would love to see other stars. I mean, you know, I think we talked about it last week. I would love to see Josh Alexander show up in NXT, have a North reunion. Um, which which version but, of Josh Alexander? Yeah, I know. Um, I have to be the walking weapon. Yeah, I think that's the one I'd want. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, I'll say this about the Judgment Day. I they either, first of all, I, and you know, Carlito, I don't get that shit either. I, I, I don't. It, it makes no <laughs> sense. It's like they didn't have anything else for him to do, but everybody loves yeah, him, so they have to take him somewhere. But I will say this. Um, at least when our truth was doing it, he was making the Judgment Day money. Like, yes, he was selling merch. 
he was bringing in some Carlito ain't done nothing like <laughs> nothing to earn his keep. Well, no, I'm not gonna say that. He got he got his ass pulled. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but and I'm I'm glad to see Finn Balor with a title again, even though it's with mm-hmm. JD McDonough. I, I feel like they want us to like JD to McDonough, but I, I mean, dude will sell his ass off. I'll give him that. But mm-hmm. other than that, if he wasn't in the Judgment Day, he is just bland. Like there is nothing about him that's like that stands out. That like there's no character work hardly. There's mm-hmm. he's just there. I mean, yeah, but, his whole mm-hmm. part of NXT UK was like I'm weird. And then yeah, I'm, but of, I'm a badass weird. Fitz, yeah. I mean, he's kind of an oddball. Mm. Now, see, you know, him and uh, Ilya Dragunov, that was some of the best work I've seen, like, out of the two. You know, that that whole saga. So, I mean, they he can go in the ring now. Mm-hmm. I give yeah. him that. Are they ever going to do anything do with man. NXT Europe? Have they killed? Oh, that? yeah, they killed that. They killed that maybe three years ago. Well, they, um, you know, what, they shut down NXT UK, and they they kept talking about NXT Europe, NXT Europe, and then NXT Japan, right. NXT Japan, NXT Mexico, yeah. and, and they haven't done any of it. So yeah, they have. They have. Um, they made the moves for um, the first couple of moves for NXT um, Asia, or Europe, or whatever, whatever the hell is going to be called. And they they got a they first class uh whatever they called for the new the new developed stars. Oh, okay. Coming in, I think a few months. This is um. Yeah. Side note Remember when you were going on that buying spree with the buying companies? This is kind of a side note to all of it, but um, did y'all see that Mason Mansoor are going to AEW? What? No. Mason yeah. who? Mansoor. Mansoor. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to they're AEW. Just desperate. <laughs> AEW is just desperate at this point. Hey, I said this on the chat the other day. Doesn't, I was watching uh, Dynamite the other night. Doesn't it look like the Gates of Agony are what you get if you order the bloodline off, like, Timu? Or right. wish, because <laughs> like yeah. it's a Moen, but but they're not really related to anybody that you would probably yeah. ever heard of. Uh-huh. So like mm-hmm. I, I don't know, I just <laughs> and they're big and like I'm, they're tatted up, but they're not. Yeah, the AEW is just trying to capitalize off of the success, which WCW did it back in the day. They're just trying to cop, you know, capitalize on that success of the Samoa Dynasty right now. Yeah. This is a hot factor. Yeah, oh, for sure. So, well, speaking of the Samoan dynasty, um, we lost Sika, yeah. the father of Roman Reigns. Uh, he died just yeah. a couple of days ago. So, um, rest in peace to him. Uh, definitely our you know, thoughts with Roman Reigns and the family. Yes. Um, so, we, we got to get a, uh, yeah, we got to get a five bells. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like. Uh, sound, you know, because uh-huh. uh, you know, Sika, you know, Sika was one of the first tag team matches that I seen. You know, the the, the Wild Samoans, like yeah. sitting down with my grandfather. He taped a lot of the old, you know, matches. Like I said, I'm I'm only thirty two. You know, I've been blessed to be here thirty two years, but I've been watching wrestling like all all centuries of wrestling. Uh, right. You know, my grandfather introduced me to them, and like it, it broke me to my core because, like I say, that w- he was probably one of the first wrestlers that I was introduced to, and one of my favorites, along with Jimmy Snucker and Junkyard Dog. And right. man, like it hurts, like yeah, just to see where you know, like Roman said, their family has so much prestige, but you know. At the end of the day, he's still a father. You know, he still has a lot of work that he does outside of the ring. Like how Roman, he lost his father. And he went to the um, to the Make a Wish Foundation. Like these guys do so 
much things and they, they're so unselfish. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you. You know, rest in, you know, rest in heaven. And, you know, one day we'll see, see you up in the big sky wrestling Andre the Giant or somebody, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Wild Samoans were, I mean, I, I remember seeing, kind of like you, I, I'm 44, but I, you know, mm-hmm. it was still a little young for me, for me. Uh, but I do remember seeing them, you know, they were, they were the Wild Samoans and they were, went to WCW. I think they were the Samoan SWAT team. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, they were just amazing. I, I will say this about, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it and just kind of going back in my mind, whenever, like, and I hate to be corny and use it, but whenever somebody from that bloodline, from that mm-hmm. Samoan dynasty, I mean, you go back to, you know, Afa and Sika, you go back to Umaga, you go to Rikishi, mm-hmm. you go to Yokozuna. Mm-hmm. They always made a huge impact. Uh, remember yes. Jamal and Rosie, that two-minute warning or whatever? Yes. Like they just come yes. to the wreck shop and leave like that, you know. And even Roman. That was Reigns, Roman brother. Yeah, I mean, it's just that whole like they all know how to. They've all known how to make an impact and make a statement, and, and I. I mean, really, if you think about it, they all did it in their own way. So yes. it's it really is cool to see. But, yeah, definitely, you know, thoughts and prayers to the family. That's that's a horrible thing to have happen. But yes. I was thinking about this, you know, his father got to see, you know, that whole yes. entire run. You know, yes. the only thing that I hate that he didn't get to see will be the minute that he comes back. Because that race yes. is just going to come off. I mean, they're mm-hmm. already calling for him to come back. So when he comes back, yes. and he'll come back as a face, you know, he'll oh, yeah. come back <laughs> heel. And it's going to be it's gonna be an amazing thing to see. And then to branch off of what you said, just he didn't just get to see that whole run. He got to see generations upon generations. Really, just excel in this wrestling business, man. His or something like that. Like this is just Def- crazy. Like how you like talking about family dynasties. Yes, yes, exactly. You definitely want to see your kids um, um, exceed you. So uh, love it, man. Um, there have been talks. Well, Triple H said on the Pat McAfee show that there will be changes coming up to Raw, and well, really, WWE in, in in particular. So because um, they're going to Netflix, of course, and mm-hmm. now the you have to bleep the crowd, and so now when they go to Netflix, they don't have to bleep the crowd anymore. Um, they're saying that Raw will be back to two hours, and so maybe SmackDown goes to three hours as a result of like being on USA. Um, and they're saying it's going to be edgier and mm-hmm. more censored stuff. So I don't believe WWE will go like really, really far to that side because you, you definitely don't want to lose the kid audience, but. What do you think about this new edgierness back to maybe like the um, the Attitude Era? Uh, what you think, Aaron? It's what they wanted. I mean, let, let's be honest. There's so much, and it's sad because some of the, this, a lot of it, they can't control. Crowds go off and they start swearing and saying just all this stuff, and then they have to end up, you know, bleeping and editing and editing and editing and. And, you know, you get off the, you know, you get standards and practices out of the picture. You go to, you know, a streaming service. I mean, first of all, I want to say it's pretty cool that they're the first ones to be the guinea pig. You know, (laughs) nobody like AEW. AEW should have done this with Ring of Honor and they didn't do it. 
-hmm. they should have gone to Amazon or somebody when they didn't get a TV deal and mm -hmm. say, give me an hour's worth of programming. Not even two hours. Do an hour. Whatever. But they didn't do it. And so, you know, I I think Raw's a little bit too long anyway. Um, I, It just seems to me that, you know, some of it's just fluff. So I don't mm -hmm. mind going to two hours. Um, SmackDown going to three. I kind of feel like that's what they've been wanting to do for a while anyway. Because it's been the more popular show. I mean, they put their their top headliner over there, whether it was Roman Reigns and now it's Cody. You know, well, it's USA that wants that third hour. Yeah, it's a network. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, yeah, but it's you know maybe they'll they'll find some storylines that'll. I, I feel like I'm kind of being a hypocrite because like I can't dog on. WWE for having a three hour show and trying to get everybody in and then bag on AEW for not getting people in, you know, right. I, I kind of feel like, so I don't want to be hypocritical about it. Cause boy, what I wouldn't give to see a Keith Lee match. I mean, I don't know what the hell happened to him, but him and Ricky Starks, I'm still <laughs> thinking about that. It's like, God bless, you know, you could build like, Ricky Starks is an A plus player and like a five tool guy. Like you could build a roster around Ricky Starks. Young, mm -hmm. could got the look, can talk, knows how to move, knows how to work in the ring, sit at home. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I have to watch somebody that I I mean, just pick something. Half of them I don't even care about. I got to watch MJF beat up a guy whose name I can't even pronounce or spell. Right. <laughs> and meanwhile, Ricky Starks is sitting at home. And, you know, they really make it seem like New Japan's world title, heavyweight title that Moxley has. They make it seem like it's more important than their own title. Mm. I know we're talking about. Well, Robert, I would say it is. <laughs> I have thoughts on AEW. Oh, man. <laughs> I am going to say this, though. I was thinking about this for the better part of a day. Um, could be wrong. You know this whole learning tree thing that Jericho's doing? It could yeah. work. It really could work. Because, like, he's doing it well now as a heel. But when he finally flips it and he does it and he goes babyface with it and he calls all the like the freaking people in the crowd his little branches and all that, they make the t-shirt like serious, it could work. It could really work. He could be on to something. But well, I, Tony Khan's running it, so who knows? I would say it's something he right, but Jericho he 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 has mentioned that um he has a little bit more creative freedom with with Tony Khan. You know, you know, he has that relationship to where Tony kind of come asking things and he'll let him do try things. But this version of Jericho, we haven't you know, we have seen this version before. You know, it just was called something, something else in WWE. Yeah. yeah. You know, when yeah. Chris Jericho came back and he had like this. Um, he had cut his hair or whatever for the first time. Yeah. It, you know, it was that. Yeah, he needs to cut his hair again. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, like, he looks like an old out of shape rocker. Get off my lawn. You know? <laughs> like, like, like if Nikki Six from Motley Crue wanted to wrestle, like, I kind of feel like that's the vibe he gives out sometimes. It's like, man, come on now. <laughs> Even Metallica cut their hair. Cut it, man. It's, it's getting gray. You know what he is. Just... I don't know. I think he rubs it in John Cena's face that he got his hair and Cena's losing his, but you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. The announcement came from uh, Triple H too um, about Indianapolis reaching a deal with WWE. Um, they're pretty much going to have all of the main P PLEs. Um, they're going to have Royal Rumble in 25 and then in, in 26 and have SummerSlam 
and WrestleMania both days. Big for Indiana sports. Um, but it's in the middle of the country, so maybe it's big for wrestling fans in general. What you think, Jay? Um, Indianapolis is, is a very, a city with so much prestige and I didn't, I didn't know that they never had a, a WrestleMania there. You know, I guess there's a lot of major cities that never had a WrestleMania or even Royal Rumble. Hell, I'm still waiting for New Orleans to have the Royal Rumble, but, um, they had it before. I went. Not Royal, not Royal Rumble. Yes. Yes. Wait. It must have been. It must have been before I was uh, of age to buy my own tickets. <laughs> I went for sure. Cause I, I know, I know, I've been to Extreme Rules where Jeff Hardy lost his WWE title to Edge. Um, I they also had the two WrestleManias, and then you know Raw and SmackDown throughout the years. But I didn't know they had a Royal, a Royal Rumble. Mm. I'm about to go look for that one. Um, at the New Orleans Arena 2001. Oh, yeah, that was before I was able to buy a ticket <laughs> on my own. <laughs> yep, yep, that's what it was. So, okay, I remember Kane scaring the crap out of us, bro, when uh, he came out with that, that damn fire. <laughs> I can imagine, definitely can imagine. Some people say. You know, the heat is just so extreme. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. Yes. <laughs> now that um now that that Indy's done that, look for other major cities to follow. New oh, York, yeah. Vegas, LA. But they already got to deal with Vegas. And Philly. That'd be my top five. Maybe mm-hmm. Miami, but definitely my top five there because, I mean, you know, they've already sold out Vegas and just went crazy there. You know, mm-hmm. they pretty much own New York. I mean, Stanford's right at their back door. So, right. I mean, the Garden's a mecca for, for wrestling. Um, so, definitely there. I mean... If this is the start, like I could easily see it, and that way they have a schedule. Boom, 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 boom. You're not bidding for one; you're bidding for the big four. Possibly, yep. maybe, you know, a lower tiered, like Money in the Bank, or you know, something like that, um, to throw in as well to sweeten the pot a little bit. Uh, but I could definitely see that 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 could be an avenue that they go down and just really start locking up venues. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it, it, it'll be all around better because... That year. Oh, my bad, Dale. Uh, he eliminated Kane to win the Royal Rumble 2001, so, yeah. Who? <laughs> I, I didn't hear you. I was talking about... Stone Cold. Oh, so did. Royal Rumble that year. So did. But that deal, like... That that'll be better for us, like having a better schedule. You'll be able to rest your uh, rest your wrestlers better in that case, you know. And you'll be able to already know. Look, I need a team down there um, August sixteenth for SummerSlam, you know. So already start building the rank, making sure the the, the tight ropes <laughs> the yeah. are just in per working condition, you know. So. I think it should improve the brand all the way. Yep. Um, the other thing we saw happen this week, well, um, we saw the attack from the Wire 6, and we knew for mm-hmm. sure that Chad Gable was dead. <laughs> oh, Chad my God. Who sold death, okay? And he appeared to work on Raw. And <laughs> basically... What a- Freaking bullet hole in his head. Yes. Basically, Cody Rhodes is out six months with a torn pack. Yeah. Yeah, Triple H is out one month with a torn quad. Chad Gable was death and was out one week. <laughs> well, they forget they forgetting Ray Mysterio too, because Ray Mysterio he died for like uh um, two weeks. <laughs> then he came back. 
Ray Mysterio got thrown off the building. <laughs> Money oh, in the bank. And look, yeah. and this is the crazy yeah. thing. I did too. This is the crazy thing. I actually passed, like, I don't know if you all have seen it or actually been to it, but the um the tower, tight, I got through they call it Titan Tower, I think. Yeah, in, uh -huh. in Connecticut. Man, it's right there as soon as you cross the state line in Connecticut. And that building is high as hell. So trying to sell Ray Mysterio, live, you know, no disrespect to the great, you know, 411, whatever, whatever he is, you throw him off a building that height, he yeah. gonna splatter. <laughs> Yeah, it's like five or six stories, isn't it? Like it's pretty tall. Like, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's taller than that. You can't yeah. just jump off and be like, "Okay, well, just twist my ankle." Like, no, no. <laughs> and then but, you know, you got this Gable with a bullet hole, man. Like, I, I he clearly said on Google he was dead. Yes, yes, he's dead. <laughs> this is like when oh. Mabel gave birth to Mark Henry's hand or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like it just didn't make sense. It's like he died, but next week he's back. It's All like right. a Days of Our Lives soap opera or something or other. Yes, man, it's worse. It's worse than Vince Mc. I know we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but it's worse than Vince McMahon getting apparently blown up in the limousine and then coming yeah. back the next week. Okay, well, I, I kind of yeah. understood that. You know, we we can forgive that one. You know, we can't we can't show a limo blow up anymore because of nine eleven. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but guy i mean as far as the spot i still didn't like the spot like i understand you just signed gable to a contract but man he didn't have to win that one i mean i would have loved to see bronson reed in his first money in the bank you know put some put some more new blood in there some fresh blood in there yeah you know i agree yeah how they used to have Kofi Kingston and all of them, and then Kane and all of them, and, and, and who who else was in all of them? Uh, man, I can't think of who else was in all of them. And how they just eventually worked them out. It's time to work a new crowd in. Like me myself, I would have loved to see Re this is the perfect spot for Ricochet to be a part of. Yeah, Ricochet would probably have been in there. But yeah, I will I will say so far they, they have been doing that. So if you saw mm -hmm. the triple threat matches, um, the person who was already in the ring on all these matches won. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. You can also kind of like look at the three in the ring. It's like, okay, well, he's not going to win because, and he's not going to win because, so it's got to be, yeah. you know. So you've been able to kind of, at least I have, like the past couple, I'm like, okay, Gable's probably going to win. And it's like, for, for the mere reason, I mean, the man pulled the act that we ain't seen since Jesus and came back from the dead. <laughs> so if he can do that, I'm pretty sure he can win a match against two behemoths that are probably going to beat the crap out of each other, and he'll just pick up the flag. Yeah. Right. I, pick up the scratch. Yeah. Right. That, that new stable with him and... Oh, the Creed? Oh, my yeah. God. That's going to be good. Oh, that's Team Angle all over again. Yeah. Oh my God. And I, you know, I'm a big Team Angle fan. Sheldon Benjamin, um, Charlie Hot, man, they got the potential to be way better. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, with, with them putting um, Carmelo Hayes and Andrade in the Money in the Bank ladder match, I, I love that. They're forcing themselves to to use new talent. So I like that. Yes. And then also, like, who the hell thought that Bianca Belair was going to lose that match to Chelsea Green? I exactly. Goodness, this was so good. <laughs> statements right now, you know. I pop so hard for They're Chelsea They're making some Green. bold statements. I mean, it's not to hurt. Me too. I, like, I, I was watching it in a truck, man. I damn near jumped out the window. Like, because honestly, I like Chelsea Green. I like, yeah, I like her. She's a little annoying, but I like her. Perfect. Yes. She's a she's annoying. Her. She's an opportunity. Honestly, yes. <laughs> she's like the female Miz. You know, like the Miz yes. was like the perfect, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She'd be a good one. She even got the bodyguard. 
Yeah, she she yep. you, I didn't even think about it like that. She is the female Miz. <laughs> Either her or uh, Tiffany Stratton. Either one would be great. And, and I like them both. I really do. Um, yeah, me too. I, I, I told Dale that uh, Tiffany Stratton was just Charlotte Flair without a rich dad and famous one. <laughs> it is. But, it is. Um, it is. <laughs> but, man, she's come a long way. Like, she's gotten personality. Her ring work's gotten better. Like, she's yes. like, I'm, I'm impressed. That moonsault she <laughs> hits, I mean, it's, Ooh, right it's better than eels. No, but it's good. I mean, it, it's it's real good. And honestly, like I, I'm waiting for this because her idol is coming back real soon. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait for the Spider Man meme when they go here to have a match because I know they're gonna do it. Yeah, it'd be cool. I know it's gonna be Charlotte Flair versus uh, Tiffany Haddish. Oh, I said Tiffany Haddish. Lord have mercy. <laughs> 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 if you get this one right, Jay, I'm telling you, you got to have your own show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, man, like, I know, like, honestly, I know a couple of amateur wrestlers, and, you know, you know, we used to uh, do another little podcast once before with wrestling, and uh, that's where I met Thunder Rosa. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so, I, hey, I'm open to it. I get a little money, maybe I can, you know. <laughs> wing, wing, anybody want to sponsor? <laughs> yes, indeed, man. Right, what did y'all think about Drew McIntyre taking out CM Punk in Chicago, like getting his lick back? What you think, Aaron? Deserved, needed. I mean, for too long, or not for too long, but like as long as the story's been going along, you know, Drew has always been taking the shots. You know, Punk's gotten him every time. So yes. for Drew to come out like in his hometown and really make that work, that that was good. I mean, he he needed he needed that as far as and the story needed it to can kind of continue. So I was okay with it. I thought it was good. Yeah. What'd you think, Jake? Man, I was freaking time because Punk was giving me the Mercedes Mon- M- Monet effect. Um, like you talking too much, bro. Like, are you cleared? Are you not cleared? Like, is that, is that what you know, said? Is I'm healthy now. Like, <laughs> like, come on now. Like, come on, man. Like, I understand you. You got the gift of gab, but you cost him Drew at home. You cost him at WrestleMania. You think the Scott is psychopath? And I'm very hyped up on the Scott psychopath. Like I told you earlier. I like no homo big meaty men. You know what I'm saying? That can move. And Drew McIntyre is that him as a heel? Oh my God. I feel for everybody in the WWE because he is unstoppable as a heel. Yeah. So two say he's been healthy since Mania. Huh? You just dragging this thing out to SummerSlam. Oh, okay. All right. All right. That makes sense. Because I also heard that um, somebody's supposed to come back now that he mentioned her name and their dog to help CM Punk win against him. Okay. So, he, he so yeah. Huh? What you say? I didn't hear you. He's going to have his wife come back, huh? Yeah. I mean, the fans would love it if AJ come back, even if it's a, even if it's a one-off. Think I'm about the ratings. About that. I need some Larry. Bring on Larry. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, she could show up with Larry. And <laughs> so, all right. Kevin Nash said in the interview, CM Punk's getting hurt too much. Mm, I agree. I mean, yeah. CM Punk, what? He had uh, two major injuries in AEW just months apart from each other? Yeah. Right. Like, you know, he's getting old. He can't do what he used to do anymore. So him wanting to be that star, that number one guy, that face, he cannot be that being what he used to be, that straight edge. I guarantee you he's not straight edge no more. I guarantee you he's popping some pain pills, uh, taking some sh- uh, some injections or some type of medication because he's getting fragile. 
Yeah, I mean, he's hurt a lot. Like, like if he would have been an NFL player, the team would have moved on. Like, I mean, yes. you know, right. but honestly, I don't want to say it's not a big deal if he gets hurt, but because it is, but he's almost just as valuable outside of the ring with commentary, you know, uh, any kind of promotional work they need done, interviews to bring on the, you know, with people like Chris Van Vliet or, you know, Busted Open or wherever they want to put him. You know, mm-hmm. he sells the brand and he does yep. it well because uh, he's got a following and, you know, that, that love, you know, he could endorse freaking, I don't know, just Starbucks and they could do a CM Punk coffee and like fans would go crazy for it. They just, they just love him, you know? So, I mean, he is hurt, but they do make the most of it, you know? And and plus you really hadn't factored in, like he's got a lot of experience. So somebody like him, you know, while he's hurt, if he goes down the performance center and he coaches a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. and give some backstage mentorship, you know, that, that stuff's valuable and, and, and needed. So, you know, I, I do miss him in the ring, but you know, to, you still get him on TV, which is good to see. Right. Yeah. Oh, to, 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 to speak upon real quick, what you said, he could sell anything. Y'all remember he had an ice cream? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he sold the hell out of that ice cream. <laughs> bring it back bring it back man all right um nakamura is going to be working in ufc ufc 303 it's going to be in the corner of another fighter um so jay i mm-hmm. i'll see nakamura in, in in real life working right i mean honestly he you know, he fits that style. I could see him in the in that octagon. I mean, it might be like CM Punk career, but, you know, <laughs> I could see him in the octagon. Yeah. So he's definitely you know, sparring and working out with these guys on, on a regular mm-hmm. basis just to uh, keep in shape and everything like that. So um, uh, Nakamura, that's what we're talking about. Shinsuke Nakamura. Right, and I- and I could also see, you know, I remember back when he was cutting those promos from his gym. He had like like this UFC type of mat and, and, and gloves and stuff in the background, mm-hmm. you know. So I could see him doing some of that, some kickboxing, some, you know, some grapple work. Like he does it in a ring already. Exactly. Exactly. That's 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 why they kind of. Um, shoot fight when they're uh, in the ring like that. So, right, and then also, who else? Who else you can send over there better to you know promote inter inter brand promotions? You know what I'm saying? Since exactly. is that perfect fit? Yep, exactly. So, um, Dijak's WWE contract has expired. I'm hearing rumors about TNA. Uh, maybe AEW. Aaron, what would you do if you were him? I wouldn't go to AEW. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I, if they were more consistent with their, you know, with the people they signed, you know, I'm not going to go there, have my 15 minutes of fame, and then just not work for six months because I can't get on TV. TNA makes a lot of sense to me. Yes. Especially, you know, when they're right there and he can still do crossover work in WWE. And if they have something coming back over, maybe he wants to resign and they can repackage him again. Uh, you know, I really miss the days of those Keith Lee, you know, Dijakovic matches. Yes. That, you know, yes. you just didn't want them to ever stop. And, you know, we lost that and then they repackaged him as Dijak with some kind of, I don't even know what he was supposed to be. Was it like a, a cop or was it like a, a yeah, I, I, I wasn't clear on that. At all. I, yeah. It, um, it, it, he it was, so, he, he was, so, I mean, it kind of did. He was supposed to be like this, um, 
this badass um and what you call those things? See, that's not a private, not problem. a private detective. <laughs> not not a private um detective, but but a uh, uh damn, I forgot what the hell it's called. But he okay. beat the shit out you. He finally you and beat the shit out you. Like a vigilante. Yeah. Okay. okay. I yeah, they needed to further explain why. I I still don't understand the gimmick. Like I I don't. It didn't make. It didn't add up. Like his actions and the gimmick didn't add up. He looked like a corrupt cop or something. Like I couldn't. He definitely it out. did. It's and especially with the um, which what you call that thing the cops have. With the especially knife with that. Yeah, yeah with the knife stick. Yeah, I I I I couldn't understand it. Like. Why couldn't he have just been himself? I don't need him to be T Bar. I don't need him to be Dijak. I need him to be Dominic Dijakovic. Like that that's fine. And, you know, well that Dijak character was his idea. Mm -hmm. he, so he had not, he had full full creative on that. Yep. Sometimes you gotta listen to somebody else because that, that was not it. <laughs> that was not it. Not I it. mean, I like Dominic Dijakovic too. Like I was just surprised when he just came back as Dijak. I'm like, usually when they take uh, a wrestler's first name, you yeah. know, it's it's the end for their career. Yeah, um, pretty much. And with the T bar thing, that like, oh my god, that's that's just way the hell out there. That was in a time where WWE didn't make no damn sense. Yeah, <laughs> but um. You know, it's it's sad that he, you know, leaving because I do love him as an entertainer in WWE. Like he will, like he have had probably the most fight for ever matches in NXT. Probably. You know, and I loved when he was beefing with with the Don. You know, when the family was born. You know, they had a uh, yeah. a, 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 a what was it a crowbar match. It was something. Then, I they, can't then they had a, a, yeah. a cell match or something like that. It was like a whole three match um, storyline. And it, it was for El it was it was awesome, man. But, you know, he posted this thing on um, Twitter or X or whatever it's called. And he just was like, report, you know, they stopped talking to him after WrestleMania. You know, he didn't even yeah. want to move. He didn't even want to move up to. The main roster. They just told him he was gonna move up to the main roster. You know. Yeah. He was like he just did. Form. You know. He said top executive told him he's doing some of the best work of his career. You know. They they lowballed him a couple different times, and they they just dropped the ball with it. They stopped talking to him, yeah. and he said, you know, he said those things. You know. He's gonna be Dijak going forward. Just to let you know, he's gonna be Dijak going forward. And what I found interesting about it, because I, I caught the post when he first did it, and it had like four likes on it. The number one like, you would never guess who it was. Oh, you might. Tony Khan. Yes, biggest cup. Tony Khan. <laughs> Smart. I mean, he's a he's a guy you don't have to train. He's ready to go. Um, exactly, you could just put them in. Speaking of which, are y'all buying into this? Uh, it's in the water. I don't know. Shane McMahon to AEW. Are yeah, yeah, we, we, I can see it. Like yesterday, last week, but um, Tony Khan did say Shane McMahon is welcome. Mm -hmm. I think Tony yeah. Khan will let anybody come on his damn show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. He's got something on that I've never even heard of from like uh, wearing a trash bag or I don't even know what this dude <laughs> the MJF's body is. I can't pronounce his name. Uh, is it Huevos Rancheros or whatever the hell he is? I I I don't understand. I, the door is not forbidden. They should just keep it shut because because they brought over anybody that you know, I mean, they got Tanahashi and they got Hiromu Takahashi, but that, you know, and Naito, I guess, but yeah. take those three out, you know, they signed to Bushi. I hadn't seen him in like five years. I don't know what the hell happened to him. He went MIA. 
don't know if he's hurt or not. And then, you know, they got Okada, which, you know, thank God that he's friends with the Bucks, so he'll actually get TV time. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, this this is right here. Shane will die in AEW. They'll put him up in the match against Darby Allen. It's gonna be dead. <laughs> I think they'll both die. They, they will definitely to, both die. You know, because Darby Allen will come back and be like, man, I got rid over by a bus. And Shane will be like, I got rid over by a double decker bus. And like, you know, whatever. Like, I'll see your that bus. is definitely I'll get my plane or uh, your train or you know. Yeah, I don't know. like I, I definitely see if if Shane, like honestly, I don't see him coming back and doing ring work. With him hopping in the ring and just sliding in the ring and tearing both ACLs, right. you know, yeah, like I, I don't, I don't see him getting back in the ring wrestling. Just you know, if he get back in the ring, he gonna is gonna be very minimal bumps, um, forty plus, but <laughs> right. But, you know, they're doing this whole executive EP. You know, they're having all these issues. If they brought him in and he was like Tony Khan's, like, general yes. manager or whatever, it'd be great. Yes. It would and, be and that's amazing. what I was kind of looking forward to, like, him being, like, a general manager, him him probably getting the young bucks in um, the elite in general in order like, look, y'all can't do this. I don't know what y'all thought this was, but I'm Shane McMahon. Well, it'll be interesting. Do you think he's going to keep his last name or would he just be Shane? That's something else. I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about that. Does WWE own the rights to Shane McMahon, like the name? Is it I would say so. I so, think all the McMahons are trademarked. Or, so is he just going to be He's going to pull Cody Rhodes. He's Shane O'Mac. I mean, hey, that works. Mm-hmm. Shane O'Mac works. Yeah, Shane O'Mac. Yeah. But WWE got the rights to that name. <laughs> because it's, it's, on a, it's on one of his shirts. It's on their merchandise. Mm-hmm. Well, let's be honest. He'll call Stephanie and Nick Khan and be like, okay, just give him a damn name. Like, I mean... <laughs> You know, I don't think that's gonna work. Like one of those Cody things where they were like, there was a drudge. He's a McMahon. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they'll they'll again. They they to pay for it. He right. may have to pay for it, but you know, because when, when I, I don't said, think so. It was just Cody, and then eventually yeah. let him have Cody Rhodes. So yeah, right. Right, but I don't, I don't really think it, it is that simple with with Shane and Stephanie. I don't think they really have a good, you know. Yeah, they're brother and sister, but I don't really think they have like a a good working relationship, especially when it comes down to the company. Because look at it, who who's taking charge of the company? Stephanie yeah. and Triple H. You know, this is Mister McMahon's baby boy. His you know, his first son or whatever. But he walked away. I, he, he, let me tell you something. I think so he Stephanie. what Vince was doing a long time ago and he left. I really well, think that that might have had something to do with it. Exactly. Well, it came out that all of them knew that. You know, Stephanie said she always thought about it, but she didn't know exactly. So it, it, what I just heard was you knew you just didn't want to put destroy y'all company yeah. because if because if they, they did not sell to TKO, if it would have still been within the family, they would have lost so much revenue. They would have lost that company. So that's why I say everything was strategically planned. Vince McMahon know he was knew he was about to get sued, and you know he sat down with his team. They gave they weighed out the options, and this is what happened. Cause come on now, how are you gonna sell all his shares? Like he sold all his shares, right? Yeah, he's a billionaire, like multi-billionaire. Yeah, who defecated on a woman's head? Like I think he did more than that. I I, I don't know. Look. I, I'm just, I don't, we don't talk about this stuff, but like, 
You know, whatever you're into is what you're into. As long as you ain't hurting nobody. But damn it, that is hurting somebody. She didn't ask for that. Maybe she did. Like, <laughs> from, from what I heard, she was a willing participant in a lot of things that, that she done. Like, just being honest, just reading some of it, it's like, come on now, you knew this. You you agreed to these terms. You knew this man had a wife. You know, you knew all this stuff, but you agreed to do this. I mean, I get it. You know, uh, you know, we don't talk about these things, and I swear I'm gonna keep it short and simple because I don't want to. I, I definitely don't want to get canceled. But uh, you know, you you a female. You know what I'm saying? Just 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 hear me out. You a woman, a grown woman at that, and a billionaire tells you he want to have a you know a side relationship with you. You know this man have a wife. You know, I'm married myself. I take a vow before God. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep that that vow. You know, yeah. the morals that you have, that showed that you didn't care. You just were in it for the money. So you, I feel like you can't me to me at that moment. You can't do those things because you agreed to, to be his sex slave. Because what else you going to be? He has a wife at home. The man has grown ass kids and grandkids. He probably got grandkids your age. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, you know. And that was the first thing I kind of thought of. Like, all right, first of like when all this stuff came out, I just kind of thought, okay, first of all, you have a daughter. Mm -hmm. What would you think about somebody doing that to Stephanie? And then I know that Stephanie and Paul have, they have girls. You know, yeah. So now yep. you think about your grandkids, or maybe you didn't at all, and maybe you were just like, I'm just nasty, dirty old man. But <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't I don't know. I mean, I I I don't know the last time that Vince and Linda probably slept in the same bed. It's probably been since like the 80s. I don't exactly. know. They they exactly. seem they seem to have been long estranged from everything that I've I have heard and, and, and read. Yes. Um, sounds like it's one of those. It's just all out now. There's, there's, there's no need to stay married now. So, <laughs> oh yeah, there, well, is. It, there it is. That that billion billions dollars. Of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> like that's one thing. And one thing I say about women, they get a meal ticket. They gonna latch on to it. They they know when to they know when to let it go. They know when to keep it. I and you know, this, I will say this. He's worth mm -hmm. like three billion dollars, right? Let's say right. she gets half. He's in his late seventies, early eighties. I don't remember how old he is. But even if he was, oh, I'm dumb enough to spend all that money. Isn't isn't uh, one and a half billion dollars the same as three billion dollars? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, you're never going to spend it. Exactly. Well, it's crazy, but well, when you got those, those type of people and, you know, they're, they're used to living a certain way and they separate, you know, and this is proven with any like major couple or whatever you want to say, celebrity couple. Um, she she moves on, right? She got to buy a whole new house, got to buy all new cars. You know, let's say she want to get a new wardrobe. You know, she go out to eat. You know, she got butler services. She got this, she got that. So now you're doing that two ways now. And now that money is going to be like going to go it's two times as fast. So I can like see $3 billion. I mean, you ain't oh, getting close. I, mean, I don't know. You might make some bad investments. Yeah, Who knows? To make a ton you know, of them. Have to give it away. <laughs> you would have to go to Vegas, on, uh, bet on, on black, anything. and lose. Like that's, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, you know, I, I don't know. Like you'd have to. But I will say this: get this book of world records if you blow three billion dollars. <laughs> Linda McMahon has her own has her own business endeavors as well. You know, 
I mean, I know she was representing Trump at one point in time. She's like, you know, dealing with the campaigns. Yeah. So, you know, she got money now. Oh, money. So she can yeah. separate if she want to. For sure. Yeah. Um, let's, let's wrap up on NXT. Um, what did you guys, what do you guys think of the potential matchup between Wesley and Oba Femi um, for the North American title? What would you think, Jake? I'm going to rest in the West. You know, I'm going with Wes Lee in that match, you know, because somebody got to, David got to conquer Goliath at some point. You know what I'm saying? And he has shown that he can compete with the best. You know, and all it takes is one cardiac kick. Mm -hmm. Just one. Yeah. And he could not, I mean, he's going to do more than one on Uber family, but, you know, is gonna really this is gonna be his coming out party, his re coming out party. And ain't no way to do it better than taking out that giant, you know, that giant immovable object. Yeah. So I, it's gonna be an entertaining match, and I can't wait to see Wesley with that North American title on his shoulder because like they say, they're making a lot of claims that he is well, it's not a claim, it's a fact. He is the greatest North American champion. Ever, you know, he's in a, the record books, and Obafemi wants to take that take that record out, but he's not gonna stop Wes. Aaron, you think uh, Wesley got a chance? I don't know. I could see it either way, but I think the loser goes on to fight Trick Williams. It, it makes too much sense. Either Wesley wins his North American title back, and. Obafemi then goes on to wrestle. I'm assuming he's going to beat the young OG. And I could see. Well, it's a, it's a fatal four way match Trick now. Williams. Well, I'm just kind of seeing how it's going to go. Then I could see Wesley maybe versus the young OG for the North American title, you know, and, and kind of. That would be lovely. Flip, yeah, kind of flip flopping it. Um, and then maybe uh, it's kind of close, but you could probably bring him up after SummerSlam if you don't have anything left. Maybe move Trick uh, Williams to the main roster. You know, too soon. Too soon. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm in agreement with you on that. I am, but also like once he's done with, like, say he fights over Femi, there's not a whole lot left for him to do. I mean, you know. I, I would say do the Carmelo Hayes effect. See what, like, what's going to, what really make, going to make him go to that next level is who he is without that championship. And don't get me wrong. He has a lot of charisma. He has the, you know, the gift of gab. He has the ring work. He's a young Booker T in training. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, honestly, I want to see how he comes back from losing that title. You know, because he's yeah. gonna—they're gonna put him up against Obafemi, maybe. You know, if it's Obafemi, maybe two or three times. And when he can't get it done, how is he gonna come back from that? Because it, it happened to all the greats. It happened to Carmelo Hayes. It happened to Brian Breaker. It happened to Shawn Michaels, Triple H. You know, all the greats in, in, in the wrestling history has happened to them. So if Trick Williams is gonna be that that number one guy, like I know he will be. You know, he got to come back from that title loss. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, we had Sol Ruka uh, defeat Ariana oh. Grace. I, I think Ariana Grace is pretty entertaining, too. <laughs> yes. But um, she's going to end up taking up uh, Sol Ruka, that is, going to take on Kalani Jordan for the NXT North American uh, Championship for the women's side. So this can be a, a pretty good matchup between two athletic ladies. Uh, Jay, what's your thoughts on this one? <laughs> Everybody know. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, entertainment-wise, NXT has been that brain for me. Like, I've been so stuck on NXT for a while now. And, it, it, and it's mainly because I don't know none of these people. It's just <laughs> learning them. And seeing what they can do, and like, oh my god, like Kalani joined that winner of the North, the women's North American title match. Yeah, 
you know, because I seen her athletic ability. But also I said it was a chance Solo Ruka could have won it. And my God, that that soul snatcher. Oh man, that's a crazy move. She she messed up on it. I don't know if you've seen on NXT Tuesday night. She messed up on it going for it the first time. Uh-huh. And then she went for it that second time. It was like so smooth. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like, that's going to be the new RKO. The, like, yes, definitely. Pop crowd, pop crowd. Every, every uh, pay-per-view or whatever. And as uh, and far as the match, like it's, it's two faces against each other, but it's like it, they're popular faces. So it, okay. it matches well. You know, the pop is going to be big on it because both of them are athletic as hell. But I still have Kalani Jordan winning over Solo Ruka. Yeah. yeah. Aaron, what's, what's your thoughts? I love both these women. I, I do. I'm very high on both of them. Uh, like you said, they're really athletic. That Soul Snatcher is just an amazing thing to watch. Like the first time I saw it, I about fell out of my chair. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm high on both of them. Uh, I could, you know, see them doing big things. You know, you take young women like these two, the Tiffany Strattons, the um, Roxanne Perez, you know, eventually you move them up and yes. you really, they're, it's going to sound kind of weird, but in some kind of weird way, the four horse women kind of, walked so they could run like they you know the four yes. women also had their you know you they could look at people like sensational sherry and you know alundra blaze and you know in those lists but you know in this new generation they really paved the way and you know made nxt so good that you know yes. it became a brand for people to watch and they made it easier for them to come up and to be recognized. And so, you know, when you see like a Charlotte Flair or a Bailey fight, Tiffany Stratton fight a Kalani Jordan, you know, it, it really is that, that it's coming full circle and and it's really a cool thing to see. Yeah. Right. And and that was one of the reasons why I was high on the Becky and and, uh, Tiffany Stratton match. Like, Yeah, I loved the uh, Becky and uh, Valkyria match. That was good. Oh, yeah, that one, too. That was another one. Like, to be honest with you, the women, I I love the future of women's professional wrestling. I I love it. You know, it is. Look at who? Looking bright. I mean, future's bright for all of you. You're right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I honestly, I see the women matches. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. On NXT, I'm looking more forward to the women matches than the men. I mean, it's, it's nothing personal, you know, but I just love what's going on in the women's evolution, revolution, advancement in the wrestling world, period. I'm still waiting on our all-women uh, PLE. Like, we need, a, we need, a, need another one. Uh, they're not going to do it again uh, because... It's so, so low. Like, that was probably their worst selling PLE. Really? Which I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the hell out of it. But it was, it was like their worst selling PLE. The PLEs are. Mm hmm. I'm surprised we haven't had a May Young Classic in a while. Yeah, like something. <laughs> um well you know they bring they're bringing all those things they're bringing all those things working those things back in you know nxt just been so hot lately like they just had the boat breakout tournaments they just had the uh dusty rose cup for the for the men so we're waiting on a may young classic and the woman's dusty rose cup the main roster also needs a women's big car title they really yeah do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think that's what they're testing it for. They're trying to see. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. the AEW is high right now with their women's uh, main card title. And if you think about it, every time another promotion does something, WWE comes right back behind them and do it years later. 
Like you had the TNA knockouts, tag team titles first. And about five, six years later, you had the women's title, tag team titles. So is this coming sooner or later? Yeah. Yeah. And can't wait to see it. Okay, well, that's the last uh, topic I got. You guys got anything else before we wrap this thing up? Um, you know me. You know me. I always have something up my sleeve. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but there was reports coming out that Becky Lynch has retired. Oh, retired. Yeah. Okay. She's retired. Um, you know, she just want to take some time out for, you know, for the foreseeable future. She's retired. Um, that. You know, she want to take time out to spend time with her daughter and raise her daughter and, you know, be a wife to Seth, you know. And, and it kind of makes sense, you know, let her husband take that manly role, which, you know, like I said, I'm not sexist, but, you know, that's that's just, you know, how things work in the households. And honestly, I am sad to see her go. I really am. You know, I hope she's not retired for long, which I hope she gets that itch. Real quick, because I would love to see three of the horse women get back together for either a match against each other or just to take on some, you know, take on a new school. We got to get a horse woman reunion, right? Yeah, That's but uh, I, I don't I don't see it happening while um, Monet is in uh, AEW. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I every mean, contract's got to expire eventually, so. Well, Monet got what life? <laughs> five <of> life <laughs> over there, at AEW. <laughs> it was like a five-year deal. Usually, when you sign with AEW, usually that's that's if she don't get hurt. Yeah, yeah. What you think, Aaron? I'm already tired of her in AEW. Like I, I'm ready for her WWE run. Like I'm, I, I'm ready for Sasha Banks to come back. I don't like this. Mercedes, Monet, Monet, whatever she is, the, I'm over it. Um, Becky Lynch retiring, you got to think about it. I mean, the more you sit here and you think about it, it makes sense. What's there left for her to do? I mean, wrestle women make more money. She's already headlined mm-hmm. WrestleMania. She's already been a multiple times Fights. women's champion. You know, there's she's a Hall of Famer. There's nothing left for her to do. So it's not like they need the money. I mean, Seth's raking it in. So go home and raise your kid. He'll have another one. I don't know. Do what you want to do. But uh, yeah, there's, you know, I'd like to see her come back. But man, if she just wants to be a mom to her kid, man, you can't hate on that. That's awesome. I think right. uh, he's going to give her a part time contract and she'll work on Brock Lesnar's schedule eventually. Or she gets I can do that. I can see that. She's going to get a shot at Flair. Her and mm-hmm. AJ working a part yeah. schedule once, twice a year, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's it. And that came, that came on the heels of her being like, she made her debut in that all green outfit. I know we all remember it 12 years ago. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a full, you know, 12 years ago yesterday, I believe. And, no, you know, it's kind of like a, what's up? Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, that comes, you know, it's a full circle moment. She debuted 12 years ago, and then that report came out, you know, came out that she was talking, saying she was retired or whatnot. So, you know, good luck in her future endeavors. Hope to see you back in the wrestling ring soon. But what you got, Dev? Uh, hey, props to Rhea Ripley and uh, Buddy Murphy got married. Yeah. So, yeah. He's yeah. With it. Uh-huh. Yep. So props Sorry. to them. Sir, Maybe the yeah. House of Black will come to WWE because they're wildly being misused in AEW. Yeah, I remember well, I was t- high on Malachi. Oh, for sure. Yes, I was high on him. And if you, if y'all notice, Selena did his move. Uh, what that was last week? She picked her opponent up with her foot. Like I don't yeah. know if y'all remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's her real life husband. Hmm. Well, yep. I'm high on Julia Hart. I'll tell you that damn much. <laughs> she comes out in that all black. I'm like, damn. Yep. <laughs> she looks crazy looking and she can wrestle. Like, I mean, 
I mean, she is hot, but like she's, you know, like like her whole like mood is like pretty awesome. So I think they should all go. Yeah, yeah Ricky Stark still under contract, just not being used by uh AEW, just sitting on the bench. That's really it. Just dumb. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's another thing I had noticed. Uh, green shirt guy hadn't been there in a few weeks. Anybody notice that? I haven't looked. Uh, I just always assume he's going to be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hadn't seen him. A few shows. I will say this. If MJF doesn't come to Little Rock, I'm burning down Simmons Arena. Like, I'm just doing it. I, I, can, I can tell you they're not promoting it. So he probably ain't gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know they promoted the Memphis show. Yes, and I thought you some bitch. If you don't show up, I'm gonna be so yes. mad. Yes, I agree. if I've got to watch freaking five guys I've never even heard of beat the crap out of each other, and I don't get an MJF promo, I am going to be sick. I want my thirty-seven dollars back, or however much I paid. I sent you for that ticket. Like I, I, I need it. I have better yes, things to do with my money than watch <laughs> Hooventude's grandson beat the crap out mm-hmm. of somebody else's name I can't pronounce, and a mask I don't care about. Like I, I just, I don't understand. Uh, right. Get it together, Tony Khan. Get it together. I agree with that, man. Okay. So let's wrap this thing up, man. Uh, really good week of wrestling. Uh, We're going to have a uh, forbidden door this weekend on a Sunday. Make sure you get your nap because it's going to be a long show, but it should be, should be entertaining. AEW does their thing on pay per view. So is it like seven <laughs> hours long? Yeah, it will be. Oh, God. <laughs> man. We'll say, get you, get your nap. So you know what you are saying. People have to work on Monday. Like I, <laughs> nothing, man. Damn. Yep. yep. So get ready for it, Aaron. Okay. Keep it warm. <laughs> I'm gonna pack a lunch. <laughs> That's it. That's Lord. it. All right. So we appreciate everybody uh, commenting and joining us uh tonight on Best in the World. Aaron, appreciate you joining us. Thanks to Jay for also joining us. I'm your host, Dale. And um, we out this thing. Kenny Omega, take us out. I speak to you, too. Goodbye. Mwah. Good night. Bang! Yes! Thanks for watching our show. Remember to subscribe for more shows on the network. Smash the like button, share, and comment. <laughs>